Hello, this is Brother Kumar from the Math Department, and this is the supplement of Lesson 14 dealing with ANOVA. And I'll be covering what SPSS codes that you need to do, or SPSS commands, that'll help you through Lesson 14. So first of all, I'll cover how to do histograms. Then I'll follow up with doing recoding. And this is a review of what you did in the last lesson with independent samples. Then I'll use the Explore option. You've used that before, but we're going to look at it in terms of ANOVA. And then I'll do one-way ANOVA. So first of all, let's look at histograms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, I'm going to use the gratitude data here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do graphs, legacy dialogues, and then I'm going to do histograms. And then what I'll do is, is that I'm going to, let's see, I want to look at the life view scores and look at it for each of the different uh, categories, grateful, as well as hassles, as well as events, those three different groups. So what I'll do is, is that I'll put in the score, the response, uh, life view, under the vari in the variable box. And then what I'll do is I'll take the condition, that's the grouping variable, and I'm going to stick that in the rows box. Okay? When I click on OK, then if I go to my, I go to my output, you will see a stack of histograms, each histogram uh, representing the distribution for each of the groups here. Okay? The next item I want to cover is doing recoding. Sometimes you're going to have to do recoding with data if, if say, for instance, if I go to this data set, I'm going to use the condition. If this is, um, if this is not numeric, sometimes you have to use the automatic recode in order for you to do other things, particularly doing a one-way ANOVA. So what I'm going to do is, is that I'm going to do a transform automatic recode. And I'm going to take this condition variable and I'm going to stick this uh, in the variable um, arrow new name box. And then I need to call it something new. So I'm just going to call it condition, C-O-N-D, recode. You can call it whatever you want to. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to click on add new name. And I'm going to click on OK. And if you go to it, you will see that we have a new column called cond recode. And and usually, right now we have numbers one or two, three, and one, and it's based off of what we uh, based off of these levels of the group of condition. And it's usually in alphabetical order. Whatever's first in the alphabet, alphabet, which is in this case events, it'll be assigned to one. And then grateful, since that's second alphabetically, that's assigned to two. And then hassles is assigned to three. That's irrelevant, but it's just so you know what you're seeing here. So then the next part, so that's the automatic recode. So the next thing I want to do is that I want to cover how to do explore in uh, SPSS. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to analyze, descriptive statistics, and explore. You've done that before. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, let's see, I'm going to take the life view variable that's going to go, that's the, that's the response. I'm going to stick that in the dependent list box. And then I might as well use my condition recode variable. I'm going to take that and, and I want to divide my information by the groups. So in order to do that, I need to take the group variable and I'll use the, uh, the automatic recoded variable. I'm going to stick that here. And then I can do some other things as well too. If I go to plots, I'm going to click on normality plots with tests. And then also I'll, you can also get histograms for each of the groups as well too. So I click on continue and click on OK. Then you'll have a whole bunch of output that'll come up. So here's the output that these are the numerical uh, statistics. You can look at, if you want to look at the variances here, we can look at the, here's the variance for the events group, the events, uh, the variance for the grateful group, and the variance for the hassles. And you can compare those to see if the largest, in this case it's the grateful, divided by the smallest, which is the hassles, if that ratio is less than four. In this case it is. Um, you can also get means, standard deviations. You can also get sample sizes for each of the groups as well, too. Also, when you scroll down, you can get histograms as well, too. That's another way, though I might add that with SPSS, you have three separate histograms. I actually prefer this where it's stacked one on top of the other because, also because particularly the same scale is in the horizontal axis versus what you have over here you have different scales on the horizontal axis. Though this is okay, I'd prefer, I would prefer the other way. You can talk to your teachers if, if what they would prefer. And then finally, here are the QQ plots, one for each of the, of the different groups. And as mentioned in the last video, it appears to be, for the most part, for all these groups that the data is normally distributed. Okay. So then finally, what I want to cover is how to do one-way ANOVA in SPSS. So what I'm going to do is, is that I'm going to go to back to the data here, 
I'm going to go to Analyze, Compare Means. You've done this, and we've done all these other tests up here using one sample T, independent sample T, and the paired sample T test. But now we're going to do a one-way ANOVA. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the response variable, which is life view. I'm going to stick that here under a dependent list. Then I'm going to take the, the, uh, the um, automatic recoded variable, recoding condition. And then one more thing I'll do is I'll click on options. I'll click on descriptives. This is another place you can get numerical descriptive statistics. And then just for fun, I'll click on means plots. Click on continue and then click on OK. And then here's where we get the results. Okay. And so here, this first table, or this, yeah, this first table, we can get some numerical descriptive statistics, the mean and the standard deviation, as well as the sample size. And we can also get primarily what we're looking for is getting our test statistic, which is our F, our uh, p value here, and then our two levels of degrees of freedom, one for the numerator between groups and then the denominator within groups. And so those are, the, those are the two degrees of freedom you need to report. This means plot, it's a good way of looking to see of which, which uh, means stand out. And it looks like the grateful one stands out more than the rest of them. And, that's, and this is a good way of showing that. Okay? And so that concludes the supplemental video of Lesson 14, dealing with SPSS uh, commands or options.